Today we will tell the story of Moses' calling, which is found in the book of Exodus chapters 3 and 4. May God's word reach our hearts as a source of inspiration for our lives. After marrying Zipporah, Moses immersed himself in a simple and dedicated life, tending to the flocks of his father-in-law Jethro. For four decades, the vast horizons of the desert became his home, his steps marked by the golden sands and the vast sky as a silent witness to his journeys. And it was on one of these days, as the sun's rays began to bathe the rugged hills, that Moses led his flock to a distant mountain. While the sheep grazed peacefully, something unusual caught his eye, a burning bush engulfed in flames, yet not consumed. Curious and intrepid, Moses approached the supernatural vision. When he was close enough, a voice echoed from within the flame, a voice that resonated with divine authority. Moses, Moses, called the voice, shrouded in mystery. Moses stepped back, his eyes wide in the presence of the divine. Yes, I am here, he replied, his voice trembling with reverence. Do not come any closer, the voice cautioned. Take off your sandals, for you are standing on holy ground. As Moses complied, solemnly removing his sandals, the voice continued, revealing its identity. I am the God of your fathers, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. In a gesture of respect and awe, Moses covered his face, for daring to look directly at God was like facing the very radiance of heaven. A gentle breeze swept over the mountaintop, where Moses stood in the presence of a divine revelation his thoughts in turmoil as he listened to the voice echoing from the unconsumed fire. My people suffer in Egypt, declared the voice, imbued with authority and compassion. The time has come to free them from their bondage. I have chosen you to lead them back to the land of Canaan. Therefore, return to Egypt and speak to the Pharaoh. Moses felt a lump tighten in his throat, a wave of fear and doubt invading his mind. Lord me, I am not the most suitable to lead the Israelites out of Egypt. I do not have the ability to confront the Pharaoh. God, in his infinite patience, reassured him, I will be with you. When you look at this mountain, remember that I sent you. Go to Egypt and bring my people back here to worship. Moses pondered for a moment, his mind filled with concerns. But if I present myself before the people and say, The God of your fathers sent me to you, they will question, which God? What is his name? What should I tell them? God proclaimed with a voice that echoed through the centuries, I am who I am. Tell them I am sent you. I am the God of Abraham. I am the God of Isaac. I am the God of Jacob. The words reverberated in Moses' mind, filling him with a deep understanding of the power and majesty of divinity. He felt the responsibility weigh upon his shoulders as he contemplated the mission entrusted to him. The people will listen to you, continued God, but the Pharaoh will not. Therefore, I will strike him with a hard blow. When I am done, he will finally release my people. However, even faced with divine promises, Moses hesitated, uncertainty hovering over him like a dark cloud. God, in his infinite patience, sought to dispel his servant's doubts. What do you have in your hands? He asked. Moses looked at the simple object he held firmly. It's just a shepherd's staff. Throw it on the ground, God commanded. Moses obeyed, and before his astonished eyes, the staff turned into a venomous snake. A shiver ran down Moses' spine as he recoiled in fear. Then God spoke again. Reach out your hand and grab the snake by the tail. With a racing heart, Moses obeyed, grabbing the snake by its tail. And in the blink of an eye, the snake turned back into the shepherd's staff, firm and solid in his hands. God instructed Moses with a voice that echoed like thunder in the heavens. Put your hand inside your garment. Moses obeyed, feeling a chill run down his spine as his hand disappeared into the folds of his robe. When he withdrew it, his skin was covered in leprosy a dreaded disease that plagued the living and condemned them to ostracism. Put your hand back inside your garment, God.
God commanded. Moses hesitated for a moment, his mind spinning with fear and uncertainty, but gathering all his courage, he obeyed. When he withdrew his hand again, a miracle had occurred. His skin was flawless, without a trace of the terrible leprosy that had plagued it moments before. God continued, his voice reverberating with authority and divine grace. Show these signs to the people, and they will believe in you. Moses felt the weight of responsibility fall upon him. O oh Lord, I have never been eloquent. I have always had difficulty speaking. How can I persuade the people? But God, in his infinite wisdom and compassion, replied, Who gave man his mouth? Who makes him deaf or mute? Is it not I, the Lord? Go, and I will be with you, teaching you what to say and guiding you in every word you speak. Moses lowered his head, feeling the weight of the mission imposed upon him. Lord, I just don't want to go. Please send someone else. Upon hearing this, the Lord became angry. Your brother Aaron is coming to meet you. He is eloquent. Take him with you and go to Egypt. Accepting God's will, Moses set out to find Aaron. He returned to Jethro's house, where he had found refuge and peace for so many years, to ask permission to leave for Egypt. This is the third part of a 13-part series where we will tell the biblical story of Moses and the Exodus. Stay with us so you don't miss the next chapters of this story so important to all of us. If you are not yet subscribed to our channel, click on the subscription button and join our community. Also, don't forget to comment, leave a like, and click on the notification bell. Your presence and participation here are very important to us. And if you missed the previous episodes, we have a complete playlist with all the videos in chronological order. Today I want to leave a verse that is found in the book of Exodus, chapter 3, verse 14. God said to Moses, I am who I am. This is what you will say to the Israelites, I am has sent me to you. May the presence of God be a constant in your life, bringing blessings, joy, and love. God bless you.